Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to explore the 8051 interrupt system using the Kyle Microvision. So what is an interrupt? Before I explain what an interrupt, interrupt is, let's take a look at the, this uh, diagram here. So I have the 8051 and uh, I have P3.2, which is the interrupt zero for the 8051. I've connected it to a resistor in series with a switch, a push, push button switch here, which is grounded at one end. And uh, I can use this switch to simulate, to generate an interrupt signal for the 8051. So this is an external interrupt. So let's take a look as, at what an interrupt is. Uh, interrupt is a signal that is generated by hardware, in this case uh, a, a switch. This signal would interrupt the main program that is in execution. The program is suspended and an interrupt service routine or an ISR is executed. Um, this ISR uh, is equivalent to a subroutine. So once the ISR is completed, the control is returned back to the main program. The interrupt can be external, as in this case, or internally. We'll, we will consider the external interrupt in this video, and we will look at the internal interrupt uh, in later videos. So, how does an interrupt work? Okay, so we have here the 8051 and it's running a main program in the core memory. And when an interrupt occurs at P3.2, the 8051 will suspend the main program and jumps to location 0003 hexa, which is this location here in the core memory. And at that location, it should find an L jump instruction to another location. In this instance, it is 0060 hexa. Just a quick word, it doesn't have to be this address, it could be some other address. So once it finds this L jump instruction, it will go to that address, finds the ISR routine, the interrupt service routine, execute that routine, and then when once it is done, finished with executing the uh, ISR, the control is then returned back to the main program. Okay, so let's do a quick uh, summary. Uh, so when the 8051 receives an external interrupt, uh, INT0 at pin 12, it will suspend the execution of the main program and then jumps to this location 0003 hexa, which is here. Uh, this is in the uh, code memory. And at that address, typically it should find an L jump uh, 0060 hexa, which would take it to the interrupt service routine. Once this routine is finished, the control will be back to the main program. Now the address here doesn't has doesn't have to be 0060 hexa. It can be any other address. But this address here, 0003 hexa, is known as the interrupt vector address. This address is tied in with this external interrupt zero. We'll see more of that in a few moments. So what is a vector address? So for every interrupt, there is a fixed location in the code memory that contains the address of the interrupt service routine or the ISR. We've seen this in the earlier example with the external interrupt zero, the uh, 
address fixed location for that is 0003 hexa. So the memory locations uh, set aside to hold the addresses of the ISR is known as the interrupt vector table. So when an interrupt occurs, the processor jumps to an address location of the code memory area which should contain the address, start address of the ISR. Here's the uh, interrupt vector address table. So on this column here are the names of all the interrupts for the 8051. So there's a reset external interrupt zero, which is the one that we have been using. Then timer zero, external interrupt one, timer one, and serial interrupt. Now for reset, the interrupt vector address would be 0000, zero, zero, zero hexa and uh, that is available at pin 9, external interrupt 0 which we have used in our example earlier, uh, the vector address as we have seen is 0, zero, zero 0003 hexa. And the third extension external interrupt is external interrupt 1. The vector address is 0013 hexa. That would be at pin 13. So there are three external interrupts. Reset, external interrupt 0 and external interrupt 1. There are also three internal interrupts which is timer 0, timer 1, and serial. Okay, before we get into program the 8051 to deal with external interrupt, uh, let's look at interrupt enable register. So the interrupt enable register, which is this register here, is an 8-bit register in the 8051. So let's zoom in uh, into the IE register. So the interim enable register, as mentioned earlier, is an 8-bit register. Bit 7 is the enable or bit. This has to be set to a 1 to enable all interrupts and a 0 would disable all the interrupts. So uh, to use any of these interrupts, bit 7 or the EA bit has to be set to a 1. Now uh, bit 0 and bit 2 um, they are the external interrupt 0 for bit 0 and the external interrupt 1 is at bit 2. So these two bits here deals with external interrupts. Uh, bit 1, bit 3 and bit 4, they are the internal uh, interrupt bits. Uh, we will deal with this uh, in later videos. So for this video, because we, the example that we have used, it, we deal with the interrupt, external interrupt 0. So bit 0 is of interest to us. And as I mentioned earlier, to use this, we need to enable uh, EA or the enable all bit. So we need to program or put in this binary uh, bits into the internal, I'm sorry, into the interrupt enable register. So uh, one here and a one here. So this will enable all in, enable the interrupts and this will enable the external interrupt zero. So we need to translate this into hex code. So this four bits here would be eight and this four bits here would be one. So eight one hexa. So we need to program this into the interrupt enable register. 
Okay, so we now come to the code uh, for the interrupt demo. So as usual, I'm going to start my program at um, 0, 0, 0, 0 hexa. The instruction store at that location is an L jump to main, which is this part of the program of the code here. So first instruction is to copy uh, this value 8 8 1 hexa into the interrupt enable register IE uh, 8 1 translated to binary is 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 and the if you notice uh, as a reminder the most significant bit uh, which is the EA bit enable all this one has to be set to a 1 uh, so that you can use the the in other interrupts bits. If this is zero, it's uh, you won't be able to use all the uh, interrupts in the register. So this has to be set to a one. And then uh, in this demonstration, I'm using external interrupt zero. So this has to be a one. Now copy this. Then we copy this value zero one hexa basically. This is setting the least significant bit high. Copy that to register one. Register one copies that to port one. So basically, this will switch on the least significant bit LED on, and this one will send it back to this part of the code. Uh, and the main task of the main program is to keep the least significant bit LED on. Now, when an interrupt, external interrupt zero occur, it will jump to this address, the interrupt vector address 0003H or hexa. That's because this is associated with the interrupt, external interrupt zero. So it has to jump to this uh, location here. That's where it finds an instruction L jump to 0060 hexa, which is the ISR. Now this address doesn't have to be uh, 0060H, it can be any other address. So for this demo demonstration, the ISR interrupt service routine basically will we copy this value into R0, which is the most significant bit is set to 1, copy that to port 1, so the most significant bit LED will be switched on. We call the delay. This will hold the um, display on long enough. I think it's about 10 milliseconds. And then when one when sorry once this is completed, the control of the uh, program goes back to the main. And that's about it for this demonstration. And the delay, uh, which is shown here. I will not go into the detail of the of the delay uh, because this is the uh, subject of my next video. So this is the uh, the Kyle IDE. Uh, I'll be using the Kyle IDE to do my code demonstration. So first of all, let me just load my code up. All right. So let me just ex magnify this a little bit. So the code that you see on the screen here is the same uh, as the one that I've shown you earlier. So I uh, don't think there's any need to go through that. So I just want to show you that the, the codes here, uh, the ISR is here. The intervector is here with the uh, call to the ISR. Then the main program is here and the subroutine for the delay is here. Uh, as a quick reminder, this this will be the topic of my next video. So uh, details later on. So okay, let's start with the debug session. No, oh wait, in a minute, let's just make sure this thing uh, there's no errors. So clean the target and rebuild. 
Yep, so zero errors and zero warning. That's good. Go to debug, start stop debug session, click on it. The evaluation mode uh, message comes out. That's OK. Click OK. So, all right. So we now have uh, the code ready to be ex to be uh, executed. But before we do that, let's pull up some peripherals. So the output is P1, right? So port one. So I need to pull up port one. So this is the output. The interrupt is on port three, which is this bit here. P3.2, right? So, um, and another thing I need to show you is the interrupt, the Carl interrupt system. And because we're using P3.2, this will be of interest to us, this part here. This is the interrupt source, uh, which is P3.2. This is the vector uh, address. This is the mode. This is the uh, request, interrupt request. And this is the enable status, and this is for uh, priority. Um, and here is the enable bit, the most significant bit. So when we run the program, we should see this one switched on first. And this one is the external interrupt. It will be set. Okay, so now we are all ready. So we go to debug again and click run. So the main program, uh, as a reminder, is to uh, switch on the least significant bit LED. That's doing it. So the least significant LED bit is uh, on, switched on. Okay, to generate the interrupt, uh, I need to click on P3.2. I'll click it on and click it off and we should see the most significant bit LED on come on for 10 seconds and the and also at the same time this will go off so the most significant bit will stay on for about 10 seconds before switching back to the least significant bit and uh, watch out for the uh, request bit here and the IE uh, bit here when I click on this. So let's click on this. Uh, off this. All right, and it goes back. So let's try it again. See this. We see the most significant bit LED coming on. And when I click on the uh, three point two you should see this come on and when I click it off you should go off so watch this and watch this yeah it's on let's switch it off and it goes back to the main uh, part of the program okay that's it for this demo okay that's it for this uh, video um, if you like to try out the code that I've used in the video I've included a link to my code in the description below and uh, so thank you for watching and uh, please take care see you in the next video bye